Then I got a message from, uh, I can only say, somebody who has directed a Marvel project in the last four years said directly to me. Uh, the studio performance. I mean, look, the movies have been terrible this year. And I, I, the fact that Disney keeps burying this in these much larger line items to where and there's nothing that says that a studio has to break this out or that out or give us everything down to the penny. How many cups did you pour Coca-Cola in in a theme park in California? But it would be nice to see this because we get that kind of breakdown. Like, for example, Comcast Universal and Paramount give us breakdowns. Warner Brothers gives us breakdowns for theatrical revenue. So we can see exactly what the rentals are that comes back in a given fiscal quarter. And we can go look at the numbers and look at what the performance was. How much money came in for Warner Brothers for all their movies they had in that quarter or whatever. <clears throat> you can do the math and you can see... Yeah, it generally lines up with with what like AMC theaters reports where they get about 54 to 55% domestically, 42, 43% internationally. It lines up pretty nice uh, with what they report. Disney, on the other hand, buries all their crap uh, together. Like, here's everything that we got for content and licensing, whether it was ESPN or The Little Mermaid or everything else just jammed together. So you have no idea what's really going on. Now, they're supposed to be restructuring this either the next earnings call or the earnings call after, breaking some things out or changing the way that they're reporting because we're still looking at the system that basically Bob Chapek created more or less. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see if that comes back out as, as a separate line item. But obviously the theaters, and I was surprised, folks, tell me what y'all thought about this. I've never heard one of these analysts call in from the institutionals and ask a question about the theatrical performance because this was always so low level to Disney's overall OI, their operating income, their, their total return on investment, their, everything that they had. This was such low bar because we were talking about even with Endgame that maybe returned a billion dollars in profit to Disney back in 2019, that was like a fourth of what ESPN did that quarter and a tenth of what the parks did. It was like, it's cute, but who cares? They're asking about it now. I think it's become too obvious, the failures. What do y'all think? Oh, it's been very obvious, you know. Um, mm -hmm. One that I'll throw out there first, Ant-Man, uh, the Quantumania movie, that sucked. Uh, Thor, <laughs> Lemon, Thunder, that sucked, even worse. Um, you also had the reboot of The Little Mermaid, which was freaking awful. Mm -hmm. that pretty much tanked it's you basically it's like the emperor has no clothes on you can see disney is doing flop after flop after flop after flop and you know your regular lay person has actually caught on to attention to that and this didn't used to be disney's mo of course you know you have a couple of bombs you know here and there that's kind of like you know one off but it's not a one off anymore and it's pretty obvious disney's quote unquote storytelling is not the quality storytelling that we used to get and people let's, are voting with their dollars. Well, the, let's the, talk the about, thing, uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, the thing is, is that before it was probably never mentioned because look, it's fine if it comes out and it makes cute revenue, but it makes revenue, right? It's a, it's a net profit, even if it's a small net profit. But now when it's turning into the red and when it's turning into a loss, they're like, okay, now the parks at a time in which they have historic low levels are subsidizing our failing entertainment mm -hmm. pitch. That's when the, the institutional people get nervous. That's why Morgan Stanley is asking these questions like, hey, look, this asset and liability thing isn't working out right now. So we've got we to gotta ask about that because it's suddenly become a problem. Let's talk with specificity about just how bad this was and why it now is rising to the level that they're willing to bring it up in, a, uh, in an earnings call. Uh, according to the, the statements that Disney put out, their Disney media and entertainment distribution revenue expectations were $360 million off. And that's in a single quarter. Now, Valiant, you have covered and, and you've been on, of course, uh, all over the mainstream media, Fox News, uh, everywhere. Here we go. Okay. The, uh, <laughs> you know, that for the past year now and your original calculations before Indiana Jones, the Dial of Destiny and before Haunted Mansion, was that Disney had lost annually nine hundred million dollars plus the box office? Yeah, based the on their expenses. Months. Now we're into this point. Guess what we're at? One point three billion dollars. Now, if you if you start figuring this out, folks, and you can see now, I think this is going to give us some affirmation as to your numbers. In a single quarter, they missed by three sixty. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I know there's a lot in that bucket, right? So when we talk about media and entertainment, there's, there's more in the mm -hmm. bucket than the box office. But if you're looking for a way to lose uh, or to miss by 360 million and a quarter, that box office is a heck of a way, a heck of a way to do it. Especially mm -hmm. when it's this obvious. And the thing you have to understand about how this gets reported and how, they, how it broke up, right? So this fiscal quarter that we're talking about, and this is some of the, this is some of the, the fluff and the pablum they put in these SEC filings, kind of give you an ex explanation of why things did what they did. Um, but the, and I'm going to go back to this in a minute. But the bottom line is, is that if you look at from April 1st through June 30th, which is the fiscal quarter that we're talking about, right, in that fiscal quarter, what did we have that released? We had Guardians of the Galaxy 3 come out in early May. We had uh, Little Mermaid that came out Memorial Day weekend, I believe it was. Yes. Then we had mm -hmm. Elemental in there. Then we had uh, uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. You had those four. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny came out literally on the last day of the fiscal quarter. So that return wouldn't have been brought in there. You wouldn't have seen that variance from those two sides. What you would have seen, though, leading up is a lot of that loss would have been a significant portion of that $100 million marketing budget that Variety said they spent on Indiana Jones, which I was surprised it was that low. And I, I, and I even said, Pro, we talked about this. I said, that means Disney knew going in, they had a hot turd on their hands and they weren't going to go full, you know, <laughs> balls to the wall on it. That's a movie that should have had at least $150 million like Guardians and, and Little Mermaid did. They cut the budget on that movie because they saw what came out of the Cannes Film Festival, and they were like, oh, shit. You had a month of, you had a month of absolute just, you know, a torrent of terrible reviews. What, oh, what yeah. else are you going to do besides pull every, every dime you have? But that's what's going to throw these enormous marketing budgets and then underperforming box office. There's no masking. You know, if you have one crappy movie – uh, you know, that misses, it's okay. You have other things to make up for, you get back to, but when you have four, five, six in a row, with the exception of maybe a Guardians that got maybe close to break even or kind of right on that cusp, mm -hmm. uh, because we don't know exactly what the total final spend was. Um, you know, we're finding out now that a lot of these movies, I mean, they, they had spent $200 million on Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania as of the last filing in the UK, that only included like the first three weeks of post production on that yep. film. Oh, uh, I mentioned this. Uh, I went, you know, back to LA in uh, for LA Comic Con last December, and that's when I heard like strikes happening, Hollywood's out of money, blah 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 blah. And then I got a message from uh, I can only say somebody who has directed a Marvel project in the last four years said directly to me uh, they are vastly underreporting their budgets. They, it's, they, they aren't reporting their reshoots. Mm. Sometimes they're reshooting three quarters of something. Sometimes an entire movie is being reshot. I think that was wow. Dr. Strange Mom, which we later found out cost a hundred million more than it was reported. And it yep. probably cost more than that. I believe so. So, uh, so basically like all of phase four, which was, you know, during the COVID era, except when Spider-Man No Way Home came out and made a billion dollars, but uh, they all lost money like every one of those movies lost massive amounts of money. Uh, and it looks like Dr. Strange barely made money and it almost hit a billion dollars. That's how insane it's gotten. Well, if, if the budget was that radically overdone, I mean, I, I recalculated it, but if it got much higher, I mean, it, it's, it's razor thin at that. And that's, what's stupid about it. I mean, they count on this to leg out. They count on these things to make money post theatrical, but the problem is Disney has collapsed the window into Disney plus, which is $14 billion cumulatively in the hole since yeah. launch. Yeah. Ready.